Hello, I'm Debbie Bell Hosking for Finextra TV and I'm joined by Colton Hopper, Managing Director of GFT and Sam Everington, CEO, Engine by Starling. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you for having us. Well, of course, it's a pleasure to have you both here. You're no strangers to Finextra TV. You have appeared separately. This is the first time we've got you both in the studio at the same time and that is because we're chatting off the back of an announcement of a new partnership between GFT and Engine by Starling. So I'm aware that you're actively developing a number of neobanks with your first client bank powered by the Engine platform being launched very shortly. So there's a lot that's been happening in the space since you last visited our studio. So let's start with you, Sam, if I can, for a bit of a catch up. Yeah, what's been the progress with the Engine platform since you last spoke to Finextra TV? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, and, and we've been very busy, uh, as you would imagine. So and Engine's taking the technology platform that was built uh, originally for Starling Bank to bring those rich, personalizable, digitally native banking experiences to consumers and small businesses, and but working with banks in other markets around the world as well to now bring those same propositions, that same level of service uh, to, to banks in, in other markets and their customers too. Uh, and so we've been very busy doing that. There's a, there's a lot of interest in the, in the engine platform, uh, banks turning up, and we've recently announced our, our first two implementations, so with, with Salt Bank in Romania and with uh, AMP Bank in Australia, and uh, we're really excited about the, the work and the progress on those and, and, and getting them to market. I think it's quite uh, a, a unique thing to, to be able to launch more than one bank. I, I, I've been with Starling since the early days, and so I'm really excited to kind of be back on that journey now doing this uh, in, in Romania and in Australia as well and bringing a product that's designed to solve problems for customers and, and do so cost effectively and, and profitably ultimately for banks as well. And it is an exciting journey, and you speak there of two implementations so far. So if I can come to you please, Colton, why is this partnership of such value to GFT? Well, we as an organization have been involved and are involved in quite a few mobile banking, digital banking implementations. And there's a real gap in the marketplace for those clients that don't want to go through the cost and the risk of building and owning all of their own technology. And Engine really fits really, really neatly into that. And as a partnership, I think there's three things that make, make the partnership relevant. First of all, there's got to be some market relevance. There is the demand, and there clearly is. Uh, the second is culture. Um, we are a very engineering orientated financial services organization, so we work very well with Starling. Our engineers can talk to the engineers on the same level, and we work predominantly in, in the same market space. And I think the, you know, the third reason is we're really, really clear about what we do and what Engine do. So they're providing the technology around the core platform, and we're frankly doing the plumbing. So we're providing the channel work and the integration work and the migration work. So in terms of real demand for it in the marketplace, the culture, and also being really clear how we work together, it fits really, really well and does fit a real gap in the market as we see for a number of our customers. So what I'm hearing is that both of your roles within this partnership are very clearly defined. So let's go back to you, Sam, and with Starling. Starling's clearly pivoted to being a tech-based business. Why is this important? And also, how are you evolving the software as a service platform? So, yes, yeah, Starling has always been a, a tech-led business. It was founded to show that technology can help banks deliver better services for customers, solutions that re really solve their problems and, and do so cost effectively and, and, most importantly, profitably as well. Starling is, is still one of very few profitable digitally native banks uh, uh, around the world, and it, it has been so for a number of years now. Uh, and that's led to a, a bit of a fintech tour that goes on for, for quite a while. We've had banks turning up from different parts of the world what, wanting to talk to us to see, see what Starling's done. How does it sit at the, the top of the customer satisfaction tables here in the, in the UK and, and make money as well? Uh, and a lot of those conversations ended in, can, can we work together? Can we, can we partner on something? Uh, and, and Engine's a really exciting opportunity to do that. It, it plays to to Starling strengths. Well, what, what do we do differently? We have this technology platform that enables these rich, kind of personalizable digital native banking experiences for, for customers, uh, and it's highly self-service. Actually, 
The thing that really gets people excited, though, is the, the operations side, bizarrely, not something I ever thought I'd be talking about. Uh, we, we've got a single pane of glass, a proper single view of the customer, so that the customer, their businesses, their relationships between them, their different financial projects uh, that everyone uses from the, the inbuilt chat and call handling for first line customer service to card processing, payment processing and, and financial crime. It's all in, in one system, in one interface, on one platform with a single view of the customer. Uh, that, that's our strength. What takes time in, in building a bank is building the, the brand, the trust, the local market knowledge and operational experience. And so uh, with Engine partnering with the existing banks that have that established and, and in place today, there's an opportunity to transform banking to improve banking services for customers much more quickly than, than Starling could do so alone. And so it's playing to the technology strength of the business with, with the Engine proposition. Absolutely, playing to the technology strength. And of course, I noticed you nodding there, Colton. So um, particularly when you speak about uh, that interest in what Starling did and then making that accessible to other banks yes. with your um, engine by Starling. So if I can come to you, what about the future? Let's look ahead now a little bit. Maybe a two-prong approach yep. in terms of your partnership with Engine by Starling but also, you're talking about the customer and other facets of banking, retail banking in general. What are your thoughts when it comes to the future, both UK, but um, I've got a feeling you're going to go beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, let me take the market first. Um, it's quite difficult to predict the future in this world. Um, so I think one would say there's a lot of volatility, but I think there's some, there's some constants. Certainly in retail banking, uh, a huge focus on security, a huge focus on cost. Uh, so those will be dominant. However, the one thing that's not going to change is consumer demand. Yeah. And the consumer demand for different services, different products and different ways to interact is only increasing. And that's driving a lot of the large uh, global banks to consider how they renew their technology. And you can no longer kick that can down the road, would be my view. I think it's no longer an infrastructure project. It's becoming core to the business. And for some of the challenger organizations, they're, they're continuing to invest. So there's quite a lot of competition, quite a lot of activity to replatform. What I would say is it's not just about the technology. The technology is a hugely important enabler to all of this. But actually, one of the benefits, I think, of working with Starling, they've built a bank. Um, they're not just a technology company. They've built a bank. And the culture of building a digital native bank and how you do that and how you fuel that culture right through your business and technology workforce is one of the, the key things that I think banks are going to have to really focus a lot of attention on. So it's a very, very hot area. Um, in terms of our partnership, uh, we're focused on implementation um, right now because we're in the middle of a number of projects and looking forward to successfully uh, going live this year and also looking at uh, more opportunities. And I do think there will be a, quite a global nature of that. Um, we are in 15 countries at GFT. We're, we're, we're in very interesting locations, both in terms of end user clients, but also for the resources that we need and the engineering and technology resources to be able to support a slightly more global ambition for what we're doing and what we're doing with Engine. Yeah, and I completely agree with the, with the market need as well. It, it's at a point where, where banks have got to do something. When I'm asked internally what our, our biggest competitor is, ultimately it's banks still choosing to, to do nothing to kick that can down the road. and so. Uh, but we're reaching the point where you, you have to be digital first to, to exist as a bank and they've got to do something about it now. Mm, be digital first. Okay, I'm going to throw the future question back at you as well, Sam. And I know we can't predict the future, as you said, Colton. Um, but what are your views on this partnership? But also, we're talking about going global, you're talking about bringing on new banks. So how do you see you being able to scale the engine platform when new clients come on board? Yeah, it's really important that we scale this sustainably. Uh, too, many, too many companies have kind of run before they could walk, and, and that's why partnerships are so in, important to us as a business. We're, we're the technology platform, we know how to build and operate core technology for banks, uh, but the technology is only part of the, the solution if you're trying to transform a, a banking operation. You've got the, the operating models, the processes and procedures, and the plumbing, the integrations to the the local systems, their local providers, uh, and, and the bank's existing infrastructure as well. You can't overlook that, particularly if you're, you're transforming into to an existing bank. Uh, and, so, and so partners are absolutely key to that. We need people on the ground in, in the different markets to work with the, the banks we're, we're talking to and, and, and to do that work that's specific to each bank that will be done each and every time. 
the, the big difference with, with Engine is you're, you're not starting with a, a blank sheet of paper. It's not, here's a list of requirements. How do you want to run a bank? We, we've got the system running. We're basically starting with a working bank and a, a, an operating model. We can walk through processes and procedures how you could do something in the system. Uh, and then, then you're tweaking at the edges and, and connecting it into uh, the, the local market, making the changes that are necessary for the, the products of that particular bank. But you're starting from something that, that's largely established and working in there, and that takes a lot of the time and the risk out of these projects. Because wh why a bank's kicking the can down the road is because of the, the cost and the fear of the, the risk in the timelines in those programs. And so if we can demonstrate that it, that is reduced, there's a, there's a real opportunity to do something here. Yeah, and I'm, how often have I heard those words time and risk as well? So an exciting and, space. And I would say skills. And skills. You know, I think, I think the other thing I, would, I probably didn't mention is um, there's a, certainly a war on talent. Um, this doesn't happen every day of the week, building a, a new bank. Um, obviously, Sam and the team have built a very successful one. Um, we've been involved in a number of clients as well. But the skills of actually doing this are quite hot and quite rare. So, uh, you know, culture is one thing, having the right technology platform is another, but also I think for many of the banks, whether they're new banks or whether they're existing banks, getting the right expertise is actually a real hotspot for people in terms of who's been there, who's done that, who really understands how to do that. So talent is definitely a key area along with the culture and actually the right solution. Mm, and talent and experience. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Colton. Thank you, Sam. It's really been an interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you.